Hello. Um, what we're going to do today is look at additional formatting of our home page. Now, this is the collection we've been working on, the one with the five images. Uh, we've even brought them in. We've designed uh, some indexes for them. Uh, we've got four indexes. We've done some formatting features here. We've also formatted uh, some of the collection specific macros, what we've been working on particularly. And the end result has been something that looks like this. What we want to do now is get rid of some of these greenstone things and modify some of this to look a little nicer. We probably should replace this banner, but I don't think we will. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that green thing on the side. Um, this thing here, the green bar, because it really doesn't help. It's just a visual noise that uh, lessens the attractiveness of our page. So that's held by a thing called the body um, BG image, background image. And we're putting this in the style package here, style package, in the collection specific style. So it's going to override the default greenstone style. Now we have to use an escape character here, a slash, and we put the bracket in. So what specifications do we want? Well, background image, we want to set that to none. We have to escape the squiggly bracket. The escape ones are just so that the web server doesn't, uh, uh, it knows that what's coming is these unusual things. So if we put that in and go back, let's take a look. Let's refresh. Boom. Gone. You notice it looks a lot nicer. We have more white space, makes it easier to read, doesn't look as crowded. A much nicer thing. Now we could have done something differently. For example, let's say we wanted a background color. If you did, you could actually do something like this. If we had put in, uh, instead of the background image none, I could have put in this kind of code. See here I've got background image and a URL in brackets quote. Now this obviously is the images folder of my collection and I have a file on there called background PNG. Uh, I could also refer to something on the web. I could use a web address. Normally you would copy your background into your images folder and then refer to it if you want a colored background. There are issues with colored backgrounds uh, which we'll get into next week but for now I've got rid of the green and I'm happy. Okay, my next thing is to solve uh, this menu up here. It's large, it's uppercase. If you have a big banner, it's going to get in the way. So I've created a package global up here that's going to apply to all pages. And there's three things I'm going to do. Uh, there's three macros that define that top menu. The link text home, link text help, and link text preferences. And I've changed the wording inside to say home, help, and options. So that if we refresh, we see now they're smaller. They're not all uppercase. Now where do they go to? The home one actually takes you to the web server for the library where all of the collections are there. Now, uh, for yours, actually, you don't need that. So we could actually delete the home one. If we want to delete one, we can make it blank. And for example, if you don't want to have any help up there, you could make that blank. What happens when we refresh, we see the home one's gone away. Uh, and we could probably take out the preferences one, the options there. What if we make that blank? Let's go back and, oops, and see, I actually just left those there. Oh, that's because I'm not in my collection, sorry. Uh, back, here we are, back to my collection. So it's taken away. Of course, it's left this one little background thing that we'll have to get rid of. Uh, let's go back. Let's put, uh, now the only trouble with uh, getting rid of the preferences part is that um, can't change anything. And we'll see later, uh, you may want to delete the settings so that the user cannot change anything. Uh, but you may want to keep it. We'll keep it for now. So I'm going to put that in. I'll go back and I'll refresh. And there it is. There's the settings one. Right? So that's there. Now we can change these backgrounds. We're going to actually later look when we look at CSS how to change these things. Well, I probably want to get rid of this next. Okay, first let's uh, replace that uh, about breadcrumb in the top right with something 
a little bit better. So there's a macro called title about, about and the value normally in there is going to end up as about, but we want the home page branded as home. So that will give us a home page as home. I notice I put it in the package about uh, before our content macro. Now we also want to get rid of the green thing behind it, right? That's what it looks like. There's the this is what's so the about page, this is the page we're on. Well we want to really rebrand this as the home page. So we want this to say home. And we want to get rid of the green. So next thing is the uh, that sort of green background is covered by the style. So we're going to redefine the default style of uh, Greenstone. So the part we're, uh, here is called P um, B A banner title. So that refers to the title. And by default, it's set to be something ugly like green. Actually, it uses an image as the background. So we're going to set that to be uh, back here, just the same as above. Ground image. We'll turn it off to none. Now, again, if we wanted to set a particular color for that, we could. We could uh, define a color, a uh, single color image, and put it in our images folder. Okay, that should do it. Let's take a look. There we are. So what we got here is now it has a white color. There's no color behind it. it matches our stuff. It's starting to look fairly nice. We've got this. Now, this beige here may not really be a complementary color for our... No, it's not too bad. We probably also want to format our menu a little bit better. Now, we could choose colors by going to a color wheel. This one is at colors.nap cswebcom color schemer and this one allows us to select colors by dragging around the sliders and then it will show us the hex values of the matching colors that we could use so you may find something like that useful one thing we might decide to change is the mouse over text what's mouse over well when you mouse over a menu item hyperlink there is a text displayed, browse by genre subject. This is automatically generated for each index. Browse by actor, search for specific terms. What if we wanted it to say something different? Can we? Yes. So I've gone off to package global, because the menu is on all pages, and I've added this macro, text describe title, text D-E-S-C-R. Title obviously is the name of the title index. And I've added my own custom mouse over. Click to see an alphabetical list of all movies. What will that do? Well, let's do a refresh. So when the user mouses over titles, it'll say, click to see an alphabetical list of all movies. So we have a mouse over for this one, preferences page, right? So we could change the mouse overs for these things to help users decide what do these menu labels do? You're limited to one, two, no more than three words max for a menu label. So this sort of lets them know a little bit more what this does. Okay, now I'm going to uh, fix up my hyperlinks to make them look a little nice. The first thing I'm going to do is to find uh, a little bit of style here for the body of my pages. Um, I'm going to make a font family. Verdana, and I'm going to give a little bit of a margin. Again, more white space is really, really useful in making things look nice. So I'll make it 5% of the page. Now I'm going to put in uh, why we want the hyperlinks to behave. So I'm going to use this to override the settings in the Greenstone style sheet, so the nav link. So when something's a navigation link, what do I want to look like? Well, background image. Do I want a background image? Maybe not. Okay, I can set it to night. No. Do I want a background color? Round. I'm going to set it to white, which means it'll disappear, so it won't really be there. Uh, font size. Maybe I want that a little bit larger or maybe just large. Uh, I'll make it large so that the menu sticks out a bit. Okay, uh, now hyperlinks have three states. When it's been before you've selected it, once it's been selected, 
So navlink underscore select is once someone selected it, I can define what's going to happen here, right? Uh, I'm going to copy some of this. Uh, font size larger. Right. I really will pretty well want this there. So I might as well copy it. But maybe I want to change the background color so that when you've selected it, it's come something else. So, hey, let's use a western color. Awful color, purple, but um, light slate gray. Is it a Y or an A? We'll find out. And then there's when you're hovering over something. When you haven't selected it yet, there's a hover. Right, so a nav link hover is going to have the same kind of thing. So we could decide maybe we change the color slightly differently when someone hovers over it. So background color pink. <laughs> okay, these are not complementary colors. Now, what will happen when we do this? Okay, what I've done is create three stages for the hyperlink. Before it's selected, I've set the background image to none and the background color to none. If you have selected it, I've set it the background image to none and the color to none. But if you hover over it, we get the image none, but the background color is yellow. Now what will this do? Let's take a look. So here we are. So you notice if we hover, there's yellow. Now there's only one pro, ah, see, hover, and there's our uh, click to see alpha of all over. So that works. Now if we select something, now one thing you see here, ah, you notice, whoa, wait a minute, you say, there's a green bar back there. Yes, because what we've been working on so far is applied mainly to here. We haven't actually applied it to everything else. So there's a bit of a difficulty if we go to search, you notice there's two things. This is called the nav bar. This is called the div bar. We've got to fix those things up. Okay, so what I've done is created the div bar. So there's a div div bar and a div nav bar defined in the Greenstone style sheet. And I've changed the background image to none and the background color to none for both of those. If I go over here, we see there's our yellow still working. But if you click on one, you now see the green is gone. However, you do notice it's a bit of a problem. These are all back to lowercase and they're not taking up our fonts. So uh, one of the things is what we've done here is only applying to our home page. Later on, we'll see we get into CSS in a couple weeks, how we can fix that problem. Okay, after playing around for a while, I changed my body to be 5% margin, font family variable. Ariel set the body background image to none. Uh, define the div bar and nav bar basically as none. I changed the text to uppercase in the div bar. Um, set the Banner title to none, and then spent a lot of time going crazy uh, working from Carla's uh, fossil one, where she did this stuff for the nav link. This is extreme CSS. This stuff for the visited, and she's got the hover and the select in here. So we have quite a bit of stuff. Basically, we're using a lot of CSS to get a particular look. What would the look be like? Well, take a look, eh? So I put back these three things up here. You notice as we hover over them, they change to bolded and blue. If we select one, click on the search, you notice these are, and this shows what's selected. It's grayed out because we're there, we can't use it. And so these are back there. If we want to go back to the titles one. Now I should have left a little more space underneath this, I think, uh, for my index. But it gives you an idea of what we're going to be doing later on. You can make your collection look quite nice. The thing what we want to do today was show how to get a more attractive home page. And we have uh, particular information of what this is all about. Uh, there's a good footer showing when it's updated, how many documents are in it. And it has all the directions and indexes we need. Now, later on, I think next week, we'll probably start looking at how we can make these look a little nicer. And we should have a nicer banner. But this gives you an idea, I think, of what you can do uh, in the upcoming prototypes.